So the purpose of this study was to look at the relationship between asexuality, which is defined as lack of sexual attraction um, and the condition of low sexual desire. Um, and there's been some debate in the field for quite some time about the extent to which asexuals are really just people with low desire who have kind of an extreme variant of a desire disorder. So the purpose of the study was to exa examine that question. Um, so we administered a battery of questionnaires that looked at sexual functioning, distress, mood, personality, um, as well as a host of questions about sexual behaviors and activities and beliefs and attitudes to look at the extent to which are these two groups really the same? Are they part of the same kind of condition or are they separate? And what we found was that on a number of measures that there were significant differences between those who identified as asexual and those with uh, a low desire or a desire disorder. So we carried out an online study of about a thousand men and women across different ethnicities, different ages. Um, we had a wide participation from a variety of different countries as well. So not only did the two groups differ on distress, which is to be expected, those who identify as asexual are not distressed by their lack of attraction, lack of desire, whereas those with low desire, by definition, one of the criteria is that they're distressed. So in addition to that, um, the, the individuals with low desire were more, far more likely to have symptoms of depression. Um, they were also much more likely to have engaged in sexual activity, so even current and recent sexual activity, despite their low desire. Whereas the asexuals were, um, there was a much higher proportion who did not masturbate, did not engage in, in um, sexual intercourse, as well as non-intercourse kinds of sexual activity. Um, and when we did a regression analysis and looked at the extent to which, based on some demographic variables and distress-related variables and desire, could these two groups be differentiated? We found that, yes, indeed, they, they can be differentiated. So I think one of the big implications is for our understanding of what is asexuality. And this is one piece of a, a much bigger puzzle, but our findings do suggest that asexuality is not the same thing as low sexual desire. Secondly, I think there's a clinical implication, and that is for the individual who identifies as asexual, who maybe seeks out therapy or seeks out a sex therapist or psychologist because their partner is upset. And so their partner might believe that this is a, a desire problem. And, you know, if this person gets to therapy, gets to a clinician, maybe their low desire can be corrected. Um, and our findings, as well as previous findings that we've, we've done in our research, suggest that like other sexual orientations, they, there's no reparative therapy. This isn't a condition that can be treated. This is one sexual orientation. And so the clinical implication would be help that person accept that this is their sexual orientation as opposed to trying to restore a level of sexual desire that probably doesn't fit for that person.